or whether you're at home watching us live um, on the internet, a welcome to each and every one of you. We look a bit depleted today, other than, oh, unless we've got a lot of chairs out, I'm not sure. Um, but you look a bit, a bit depleted, but it's still good to keep, um, keep separate, isn't it, with um, what's going on today or these days. A letter to share with you from um, Major Edwina Cousins. <coughs> to everyone at Woking Corps, I'm writing to say a very heartfelt thank you for the way you have generously supported our life houses during this harvest time. I can honestly say all is safely gathered in ere the winter storms begin. We were down to our very last, and now I've been able to share the supplies out among both centres with some to spare for our tenancy sustainment team. Thank you is a very simple word, but it is heartfelt when I say it. We had a young man move in last week, and to be able to give him everything he needed to wash with after having been on the streets for several weeks was just wonderful. So thank you from everyone here in Reading. Kind regards, Edwina Cousin Major. So thank you very much for all the goodies, all the toiletries that you donated last week. Somebody said to me, you'll be amazed how much is brought in. And I actually was amazed at how much you brought in. So thank you very much um, for participating in our harvest in that way. <clears throat> You will also be aware that we did the big collection in a very different way this year as well um, to previously. We didn't send you out, and myself didn't get sent out, knocking on doors, asking for envelopes back. But amazingly, and this is very surprising, there was a, quite a big response to people sending the envelopes back. Um, as such, um, £1,040 was raised and with the gift aid as well, that was from people sending the envelopes back, £260 on the Just Giving page, and a vintage tea, £155. So that was £1,453 altogether, without us having to go on knocking on doors and asking for it to come back. So we'll see where the future takes us. Some more will be added to that to make it up, um, to try and get near, I guess what we would normally raise, but thank you for that. If you would like to come to the band concert on November the 13th, Major John has tickets, and I'm sure he will be really pleased to sell you a ticket should you wish to come to the Friary Band on the 13th of November. <coughs> David and I are away this week, Monday to Friday, at Councils at Harrogate, and then a couple of days further up the coast in Yorkshire while we're there. Um, but we'll be thinking of you if anybody needs us in an emergency. That's absolutely fine. Call David. <laughs> oh, did I really just say that? I think I probably did. You can call any of us should you need us in an emergency. I don't know how you feel today. I don't actually, and I'm looking for sympathy here, I don't actually feel on top of the world today. Just got the germs. I haven't got covid but I've got those germs that are going around. We all got a bit, our immune systems all took a bit of a hit last year, didn't they? We didn't mix with people. So now we're all picking up all sorts of things. So um, I don't feel on top, of the, on top of the world, but I don't know how you feel. Do you feel like singing and make music, making music in your hearts to the Lord? I'll cheer up as the day goes on. I'm sure I will, because I'm here with you all. But we're going to stand and we're going to sing, sing and make music in your hearts to the Lord. Give thanks to God for everything. Can we sing it through twice, Bandmaster? We can. Can't we? We will. Thank you very much. Let's stand together and raise our voices and sing, sing and make music in your hearts to the Lord. <coughs>
wasn't too bad. You can take your seats because you're all doing it anyway. <laughs> take your seats. We haven't finished singing yet. I must be getting like these, um, like these modern officers who keep you standing up singing forevermore. Maybe I'm heading that way. I don't think so, though. 392 if you use a book. Who watches Strictly on Saturday nights? We don't. We don't, but I would love to know how to dance, to glide around gracefully, wouldn't you? It looks so wonderful, doesn't it? And we're going to sing, Teach Me to Dance to the Beat of Your Heart. Um, Penny's going to play us, um, accompany us with this, for this song. And um, you know this, I'm sure, don't you? Yeah. Of course you do. Let's sing together. <coughs> ending doesn't it but thank you for that do you feel okay Ned feel better yeah. I'd like to say I did <laughs> but I actually don't but um yeah it's good it's good to join together and to sing and to praise the Lord because he has done so much for us hasn't he no matter how we're feeling he's there for us and we're grateful I meant to tell you earlier that um Next week, we will have two people from the Salvation Army Training College, from William Booth College, joining with us, just to have a look at us next week. They'll sit in the congregation, and they will observe, and they'll probably see if they fancy joining us or not. I think it's guaranteed that they will. And for about twice every month, for the next few months, they will be here with us. They will be leading worship. They will be preaching, whether it's to give David and I a rest, to give you a rest from us, or to give them some experience. It's actually to give them some experience. Um, so I'm sure we'll, we'll make them welcome. I'm sure we've been chosen because we're so easygoing. We don't have any hassles, any trouble. We're, everybody's such nice people, so they will have thought, Woking. That will be the ideal place to send them to. So um, 
I can't even remember, Adrian, I think his name is, I can't even remember the lady's name as I stand here. But they'll be with us from next week, and I'm sure we'll, we'll make them welcome, won't we? And they'll gain some lovely experience by joining together here with us. We're going to concentrate this morning on Psalm number 37. I'm going to read the first eight verses, and then later on in worship, some other folk are going to join and um, bring the rest of the chapter to the rest of the psalm to us. So Psalm 37 and the first eight verses say this. Do not fret because of evil men, or be envious of those who do wrong. For like the grass, they will soon wither. Like green plants, they will soon die away. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord, trust in him, and he will do this. He will make your righteousness shine like the dawn, the justice of your cause like the noonday sun. Be still before the Lord, and wait patiently for him. Do not fret when men succeed in their ways, when they carry out their wicked schemes. Refrain from anger and turn from wrath. Do not fret. It leads only to evil. We ask that the Lord would bring his blessing to that reading. And, and actually, what we're going to think about today is this. Does it pay to be good? Does it pay to be good? That's our theme for today. We're going to turn to a song, 743, if you use a book, and we're going to have our, our time of prayer. The General of the Salvation Army has asked today that there be a global wave of prayer for the pandemic that seems very much to be, well, it hasn't gone away, has it? It hasn't gone away at all. And as we watch the television, we, beca we perhaps become... A bit nervous we perhaps begin to think are we doing the right thing where can it lead what can happen next and it is dreadful isn't it and it gets in your mind and it makes you worried and concerned it really does so the Salvation Army worldwide today is joining in for um, a second wave of prayer for the global pandemic so we're going to sing this song through and then we'll pray and then we'll, I'm going to bring a special prayer that has been written for this day today. But as we sing this song, as we come in prayer um, before God just now, just fill your mind with some of the things. The vaccine rollout, how absolutely brilliant it has been. Whoever is at the top of the tree and organised this, I will never know. But they deserve our admiration and our respect. Um, but things are still tough, and people in other countries have things far tougher than we do here. We just want to pray for it to be banished. We want to pray for our world to be healed. We want to pray for people to be safe, and people to feel safe, and to be well. So just think of, of the, the things that we have lived through in these past months. Uh, this, uh, the generation that are, are alive today, we'll make our way into the history books, won't we? Along with some of the other things that have gone in past days. But we need to, to bring it to the Lord in prayer. So let's sing this song just now. As we come in prayer before you, we with gratitude would say, Thank you, Father, for the family where each member learns to pray. And verse 3 goes on to mention our family that is worldwide. Let's sing together.
perhaps we could just ask Penny to play that, um, that music through again and just um, make your own prayers quietly within your heart for us gathered here, for each other and for the worldwide situation. Almighty and merciful Father, who show your love to all your creation, we come before you asking for a control of the coronavirus currently ravaging our world. Hear graciously the prayers we make for those affected by the virus in various parts of the world. We would ask, Lord, that you will grant healing to the sick, eternal life to the dead and consolation to the bereaved families. We pray that an effective medicine to combat this sickness be speedily found. We pray for the relevant governments and health authorities that they take appropriate steps for the good of the people. Look upon us in your mercy and forgive us all our failings. Amen. Let's join together in the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory for ever and ever amen and we pray don't we that the lord will indeed answer that prayer for healing for our world the songsters are going to bring us into a sacred place just now as they bring their contribution to you. I don't know whether you have a special place in your house, in your garden, in, in any church, any place, but it's good when we find that sacred place, isn't it, and we can meet with the Lord. So let's listen as the songsters sing this lovely song to us just now.
sacred space, isn't it? And just go before the Lord, wherever that sacred space is. And it can be absolutely anywhere. It really can. Thank you for that lovely song and that lovely rendition. Now, Wendy is going to bring the second of our scripture readings to us this morning. Psalm 37, continuing from verse 9. For evil men will be cut off, but those who hope in the Lord will inherit the land. A little while and the wicked will be no more. Though you look for them, they will be not found. But the meek will inherit the land and enjoy great peace. The wicked plot against the righteous and gnash their teeth at them. But the Lord laughs at the wicked, for he knows their day is coming. The wicked draw the sword and bend the bow to bring down the poor and needy, to slay those whose ways are upright, but their swords will pierce their own hearts and their bows will be broken. Better the little that the righteous have than the wrath of many wicked, for the power of the wicked will be broken, but the Lord upholds the righteous. The days of the blameless are known to the Lord, and their inheritance will endure forever. In times of disaster, they will not wither. In days of famine, they will enjoy plenty, but the wicked will perish. The Lord's enemies will be like the beauty of the fields. They will vanish, vanish like smoke. The wicked borrow and do not repay, but the righteous give generously. Those the Lord blesses will inherit the land, but those he curses will be cut off. The Lord delights in the way of the man whose steps, whose steps have been made firm. Though he stumble, he will not fall, for the Lord upholds him with his hand. Amen. There were some words in that scripture that said the righteous give generously. And so we're going to... Um, our offering slide will come up on the screen just now. Or as you leave, you can make your offering in the plate. Some of you have already done so on the way in. It's getting habit now, isn't it, not to pass the plate around anymore. But Penny's just going to play a little piece of music as we think of what we have and, um, and can give in gratitude to the Lord just now. So let's listen and let's consider our offering just now.
you, Lord, for your generosity to each and every one of us. And we ask, Lord, that you will make us cheerful givers, that you will help us to give that which we have and that which you deserve back to you so that your kingdom can be enhanced here. We thank you for the gift of music and for the blessing we receive as we just sit and listen and take in and others share their gifts with us. So we ask just now, Lord, that you will bless our gifts when we give them and the givers. Amen. Don't you think it's just nice sometimes to sit and still? I think sit still and listen. I think in the Salvation Army we're not too good at that, are we? Because we're usually rushing around. And I think of um, recent years, maybe we've got the message that sitting and being still and taking in and listening is good for our souls. It really is. Um, so thank you, Penny, for playing that lovely piece of music. The band are going to play to us just now. I can't recall what it is, I'm afraid. Sorry?
Thank you very much to the band for that contribution. We're so blessed, aren't we, that our musical sections and our musical people um, bring blessing to us every week. We're grateful for your, I was going to say efforts. <laughs> Maybe that is the right word. Thank you very much. We're going to have our last Bible reading just now, and Louise is going to bring this to us. Continuing with the words of David the psalmist to the end of the chapter. I was young, and now I am old. Yet I have never seen the righteous forsaken or their children begging bread. They are always generous and lend freely. Their children will be blessed. Turn from evil and do good. Then you will dwell in the land forever. For the Lord loves the just and will not forsake his faithful ones. They will be protected forever, but the offspring of the wicked will be cut off. The righteous will inherit the land and dwell in it forever. The mouth of the righteous man utters wisdom, and his tongue speaks what is just. The law of his God is in his heart. His feet do not slip. The wicked lie in wait for the righteous, seeking their very lives. But the Lord will not leave them in their power or let them be condemned when brought to trial. Wait for the Lord and keep his way. He will exalt you to inherit the land when the wicked are cut off. You will see it. I have seen a wicked and ruthless man flourishing like a green tree in its native soil. But he soon passed away and was no more. Though I looked for him, he could not be found. Consider the blameless, observe the upright. There is a future for the man of peace, but all sinners will be destroyed. The future of the wicked will be cut off. The salvation of the righteous comes from the Lord. He is their stronghold in time of trouble. The Lord helps them and delivers them. He delivers them from the wicked and saves them because they take refuge in him. Amen. Thank you, Louise. <clears throat> We're going to sing again now. We'll probably stand, I think, and sing this. This is one of my favorite songs. 204, if you use a book. There is a Redeemer, Jesus, God's own Son, precious Lamb of God, Messiah, Holy One. Thank you, O oh my Father for giving us your son. Let's stand together as we sing. <clears throat>
please take your seats. Isn't that going to be an amazing day when we stand in glory and see the Saviour's face? You can't imagine, can you, how amazing that is going to be. Thank you for that. Well, a couple of weeks ago, I received a phone call from a lady asking if someone could go to the supermarket for her. She sounded quite an elderly, frail lady. So I said, yes, just give me a little while, finish what I'm doing, and then I will go to the supermarket for you. Well, they were rather bizarre items that she asked for. They certainly were not necessities of life. They really were not, believe you me. But I said I'd go, and so go, I did. She even wanted them from Waitrose. It says it all, doesn't it? Absolutely says it all. The most bizarre items you could ever, ever think of. I might tell you one day. Well, on my way up to her flat, I was met by a group of about six youths. They were wearing their dark hoodies, their joggers, and their baseball caps. They were gathered at the top of the stairwell, smoking their cigarettes, and heaven knows what else they were smoking because the smell emanating was a little strange, but I have come across it before. I just have. I don't really know where, but I have. But these young men were very polite, though. They apologised for standing at the top of the stairwell in their group, and they very politely moved out of my way. And I smiled and thanked them, but my heart was going like this. It really was. And I must admit that it made me feel a little nervous. And David was outside in the car, over the banister, all nice and safe and tucked up and so I looked over the banister and I shouted to him can you come up I do need a man to protect me you see and he came up and um, we passed over these items to the person concerned and again on our way down these young men were gathered along the stairwell and again they moved away and they apologized and we thanked them And David said to them, mind what you are up to. And they made some friendly comment, and we parted company. And then just this week, as I um, sat down to think about what I was going to speak to you about this morning, on the BBC News, there were two mothers. One had lost her daughter due to taking a non-prescribed drug, and the other mother was the mother of the person who had been groomed as part of a county lines initiative and he had given the drug that the other one had taken. These two ladies had made friends and it was quite touching to watch and I couldn't help but feel saddened for both of them. So many questions were going round in my mind Did they know what their children were doing? Did they know with whom they were spending their time? Why were the youngsters out drinking and taking drugs? And then just last week as well, we heard about, um, you won't know him, but we did personally, Sir David Amos, the wonderful MP of Southend who was brutally murdered. We lived just five minutes walk from that church where that happened, and whenever we went for a walk around the block, we went past that church. And Sir David Amos was one of the most lovely men you could ever wish to meet. He came and opened the refurbished Salvation Army at Leon C. He came and opened the refurbished charity shop. We did a lot of refurbishing in our times um, there, and we had lots of dealings with him. He'd come into the day centre, dressed as Father Christmas every single Christmas, and we would think, gosh, this man's daft. But there he was, talking to the old folk, dressed as Father Christmas. There are all sorts of questions, aren't there, that many Christians, and especially ministers, are asked 
in their lifetime. These questions range from where is God when there is all this suffering happening in our world? Does it really pay to be good? Well, part of me sometimes thinks that it pays to be bad, especially in the world in which we live in these days. I guess we were all sickened some years ago when we saw the pictures and discovered the names of the mother and her boyfriend who, had so cruel, who were so cruelly to blame for the death of baby Peter. Can you remember that? Some years ago. Remember the handsome little blonde boy so cruelly treated by those who should have loved him and should have cared for him. And as the news went on, it annoyed me immensely to hear that they were to be kept away from everyone else in prison for their own safety. And that when they will be released, they will be provided with a safe house in which to live. And they will even be given new identities again for their own protection. I would imagine that they will probably live in more comfort when they are released than they probably lived previously, before the horrendous crime was committed. Boy, it made me mad. It really did. The very idea that those who had done such wrong will probably be treated so well and at a cost of thousands, possibly millions of pounds to the taxpayer. Those who probably work hard and try their best to live well. Those decent, honest, upright citizens who try to be good. It would seem then, in some cases, to those of an immoral and evil nature, that it pays to be bad. Back to that question then, does it pay to be good? A young person may face it when they leave home for the first time. You may face it when confronted with a temptation that seems just that little bit too strong to handle. You may face it in business when things seem to be going badly and you see an opportunity to make some quick but legally questionable money. You may face it when the problems at home get a bit sticky and you meet someone else who is attentive and appealing. You may have to face it when you have to make a decision of honesty that probably no one but you is ever going to know. There are some who may look at life and say, well, life bears it out. It just doesn't pay to be good. I read of a woman who is very embittered because her husband doesn't make very much money. And so this lady is not able to keep up with her more affluent friends. And what really galls her is that at one time she would keep up, she could keep up with the very best of them. Her husband used to be the sales manager in a large private corporation. He drew a great big salary and they lived in a really large house. All sounds a bit similar to maybe some of the things that we see happening in the world of business right now. Some are heading for a fall. Anyway, the president of the company asked the husband to endorse certain household appliances that were defective products being rebuilt and sold as new products. The sales manager protested that it was dishonest and said that he wouldn't do it. The employer warned him that he had better do it if he wanted to keep his job. The sales manager refused, so he's now drawing a small salary and living in a small house and his wife is bitter and doesn't think that it pays to be good. It's a far-reaching question. Does it pay to be good? What does it profit a person to follow God and live a truly moral lifestyle? This really isn't a new problem. It bothered the ancient Hebrews too. They had always felt that there was a perfect equation be between conduct and reward. When you did good, you were rewarded. And when you did bad, you were punished. 
Some people, though, were evidently beginning to question it. They had seen some who had not done good being apparently rewarded with success and comfort, and others they'd seen who served God and they didn't fare quite so well. Psalm 37, then, is one of the wisdom psalms that addresses our question. Firstly, it pays to be good when you see the result. The first two verses of our psalm begin by advising the readers not to get jealous of unjust people who seem to prosper. The psalmist warns against using their prosperity as an excuse to imitate them and do something unwise. A young actress once asked, why shouldn't I begin a relationship with the producer? The other actresses do, she said and they're happier, and they're more successful than I am. She had her ideals, she said, but had found that they didn't really get her anywhere. Perhaps it would have been good for that young actress, and many more like her, to take the advice of the psalmist. There are contrasts which run from verse 2 to verse 35. Verse 2 says that the wicked will wither in the sun. Verse 35 indicates that once the wicked seemed to prosper as a spreading tree, but later they could not even be found. Verse 13 even says that God laughs at them. Now there's a thought. Those who follow God really do live in a different manner than the wicked. And in the end, they have far greater treasures in heaven. What the unbeliever gets lasts a lifetime, if he's fortunate. What a person gets from following God lasts for all eternity. It pays to be good when you examine the alternatives. Although evil people seem to prosper, evil is still evil, regardless of how successful it appears in terms of wealth and in terms of power. In times of tragedy, you can bankrupt your resources, you really can. What do those people do? Where do they turn when trouble strikes them? The psalmist assures us that the righteous are better off in their poverty than the unrighteous in all their wealth. The reason being that the righteous person possesses inward resources that the unrighteous person doesn't possess. I guess we all know that there is no guarantee in Christianity against trouble, but there is a guarantee against defeat. If you are the kind of person who does get swept along in temptation, dishonesty, and all matter of unrighteousness, you stand a good chance of losing the respect of those who you respect. Your children, for instance. Those who hopefully look up to you and perhaps admire you, although probably are never going to say so. Imagine letting your children down by living a life far less than they imagine that you live. How would that feel? to have let your children and your family down. I know I couldn't bear it if we did that to our children. If our children see us heading for a big fall, they're never going to respect us. I read of a man recently whose nephew was studying locally. His father was in business, but he was tempted to do wrong and he landed up in prison. His son was so horrified that he has quit his studies. He just can't face going on with it all. Most people are more interested in having the love and respect of their family. That really is worth so much more than all the money you can imagine. Can you imagine not only losing your standing with your family, but can you imagine losing your standing with God? Our standing with God is so important. 
All those who humble themselves before the Lord shall be given every blessing and shall have wonderful peace. Consider the alternative to that. It pays to be good when you consider some principles. Five successive verses outline some principles that will guide a person in trying to be good. Firstly, there is trust in God. It's only by faith that we can place our trust in him, in him alone for salvation and for guidance. When we delight in the Lord in doing his will and in following him, our deep desires for acceptance, mercy, security and peace will be found. Unreserved commitment to God is also a necessary principle. Verse 5 of, of Psalm 37 is very well known and it says this. Commit everything you do to the Lord. Trust him to help you do it. And he will every time. That verse, so I'm told, is a verse that was often quoted by David Livingstone, the missionary pioneer in Africa. To commit ourselves to the Lord means entrusting everything our lives, our families, our jobs, our possessions, everything to his control and his guidance. To commit ourselves to the Lord means to trust him, believing that he can care for us better than we can ever care for ourselves. We should be willing to wait for him to work out what is best for us, and he will. Sometimes in that one we have to be patient and not try to run before God. To wait on the Lord is to be dependent on him. And this kind of dependence will allow us to live so much more successfully for him. Does it pay to be good then? We might, may ask this question each day in many different forms. And we have seen that the psalmist points us toward an answer. When we measure life in more than commercial terms, we can begin to understand it a little more. Following Christ really does pay the best dividends that there are. Let's just pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we find ourselves following you. We do know that it does pay to be good but sometimes we look around us and we see that evil people are prospering and it gets us down and it makes us cross and it makes us angry but we know deep within our hearts that you are a great God we know that you can forgive these people if they come to you and they ask for your forgiveness we thank you that you are a great God who is patient with us, that you accept us as we are. We thank you that you want us to live a good, a moral, an upright life. And we pray for those young people who get so caught up in so many things these days. I thank you for the respect that those young men showed to me, to us, the other evening, even though I was nervous. And we wondered what they were up to and we could guess what they were up to. But they were polite and they showed respect. And just now we pray for the parents of such young men, such young people, who perhaps have a tough time in knowing where their families are. We pray, Lord, that you will somehow open their eyes and help them to see that there is a better path. And maybe it's us who are going to show them that better path. Help us when we come across such folk to be open, to be willing to show them care, concern and kindness. And maybe, just because of us, maybe one day they will come to you. Bless our world, we pray, all the evil in it. Just take it and help people to know that it really does pay to be good. Hear and answer prayer, we pray. Amen. Amen.
We're going to turn to song number 804, if you use a book. A song that says, How firm a foundation, ye saints of the Lord, is laid for your faith in his excellent word. What more can he say than to you he hath said, to you who for refuge to Jesus have fled. Perhaps you'd like to stand as we sing together. some words of Paul as a benediction. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Good morning and God bless you all.